Hey guys, I'm going to show you today how to use some of these skills that you're um, going to want to know to how to use with uh, Fusion 360. So um, first things first, um, I want you guys to go over here and double check to make sure that the document settings is set to inches. So you should just have to click on this triangle and check that your, in your units are set to inches. If not, you got to click on this icon here and where it says unit type, make sure that inches are selected. The next thing that you're going to do is you're going to expand the triangle next to origin and we're going to select XY by clicking it. So the there's a, going to be a blue triangle or <laughs> a blue uh, square that's selected here which indicates the plane that you're going to be working with, which is XY. So once this is us, uh, this once this is highlighted, you're going to right click on this and choose create sketch. So your surface is going to recenter and you're now going to be creating a sketch. So we're going to be making kind of like um, a die, like the singular of dice. So to do this, what we're going to do is select two point rectangle. And when you do this, you're going to click anywhere one time with your left mouse button to select the first corner. And this will allow you to scale this around and move it until you select the second corner, which will lock it in place. We're not gonna do that though. So one of these boxes are going to be highlighted for you. And what I'm gonna have you guys do is type in three. And then what you're gonna do is hit the tab key in order to get to the other box, because tab will allow you to get to the various boxes. So here, you're gonna type in four. We're gonna do a rectangle at first, and there's a reason why, and I'll show you in a minute. So after you type in three and four, press enter. So what you have here, I'm gonna scroll out, is a rectangle that's more high than it is wide. So what we're going to do next is talk about how to zoom and pan and orbit. So scrolling, scrolling forward on your mouse will zoom out. Scrolling towards you on the wheel will zoom in. If you want to pan, which is moving left down, up and right, um, you hold down your, your wheel mouse button to go left and right, up and down. And if you want to orbit, which is to move around the 3D space, you have to hold down the shift key on your keyboard and hold down the wheel mouse button in order to look around your 3D space. If you don't wanna do any of those things, you can simply just click on this box over here, which will allow you to see the front, the bottom, the back, and all the different sides. And this will allow you to turn this around and all the very fun things you can do with this. And it also has the home button where you can go back to the default view. And then I want to click on front to look at it from the view that we were just looking at. So I do want you to hold your left mouse button down on front or just orbit slightly to the left so that you can kind of get a side perspective of this because we're going to do something else to the shape which is going to be extrude. So with this surface selected, it has to be a dark blue, so you can click on it. You're either going to go to modify, no, sorry, scratch that. Just, um, you just type E. Well, you can either right click on this and choose extrude or type E on your keyboard to extrude this. So when you extrude it, basically you're gonna make a 2D shape a 3D shape. This is done one of two ways. You can either hold down your left mouse button on this arrow and pull it out, or you can type a value into this box. So either way, we want to have this. Um, type in three and press enter. So now we have a three by four by three rectangle cube thing. You're also gonna notice that this shape is kind of piercing through the plane here, which isn't very good. So I'm going to show you how to move things around. 
So you might notice over here on this tree, there's a thing called bodies. So when you've kind of finished a shape, and you usually finish a shape once you extrude it, it's going to be called a body. And you can select the whole thing by selecting body. You can also rename this if you want to by double clicking it and you can call it whatever you want to. Let's just say dice. So this whole thing is now selected. So what we can do now to it is click this button here, which is for move copy. So when we do this, you're going to see a couple of things. This box shows up over here. And you're also going to see some arrows over here, which will allow us to move this where we want it to go. So if we hold down our left mouse button on this arrow, we can drag this straight up until it gets to wherever you think might be the bottom of the grid and press enter. If you want it to be more specific, more specific, if you want it to be more precise, what you can do is click on front. And this red line actually indicates the, the bottom of the grid. You can click on dice over here again to select the object. Click on move. And hold your mouse on on this arrow until it lines up with this red line like that. And that is the bottom of the grid. And then we'll hit OK. So then what I'm going to do is move this over so you can see, hey, look, it lines up at the bottom of the grid and it doesn't pierce through. Awesome. Also, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to hold down my wheel button and get this thing into shape, or into, into the screen. I'm going to show you also how to um, do something else to this. Initially, I showed you that this is um, more high than it is wide. But you can always change these things. I did this on purpose. So if you go to Modify and you click on Press Pull, um, but first you have to make sure the thing is selected. So I'm going to cancel that. Select the body and press, uh, go to Modify and Press Pull. Uh, I guess you got to click the surface first. Sorry. So what you're going to do here is click the surface and then go to modify and then press pull. So what this allows you to do is to resize the shape however you want it to be once it's been extruded. Just showing you that you can modify things once they've already been created, okay? The next thing that we're going to do is we're gonna modify this another time with some of the options that's on the modify menu. First being fillet. So if you can see here, fillet is just taking an edge and it's rounding it. So I'm going to click on fill it here, or you can see if you press F on your keyboard, once you have a line selected, it's going to fill it an edge. So I'm going to click on an edge here, and you can see again, there's two ways of doing this. You can type a value into the box, or you can drag your mouse here and select whatever this is here. Um, how about we just roll with 0.3? or 0.4, I like 0.4. Type 0.4 in the box and press enter. And then what we're gonna do is keep doing this all the way around. You're gonna see something cool though, once a fillet has already been applied to a conjoining edge like this one. So if I click this edge and I hit F for fillet, and I type in 0.4, because that's the value we're going with, you can see now that this edge, which is connected to this edge that was done before, and this edge, which is connected to this point right here in the middle, will now be done for you, which is kind of cool. So what I'm going to have you guys do, I'm going to pause the video, and I'm going to have you guys do the same process all the way around, just to these edges on the outside of the cube. So there we go. We have all of our sides filleted, and it now looks like a rounded rectangle, or a rounded cube like a dice would be, kind of. So what if you want more than one of these objects? Well, we can use the move copy thing again. So I wanna show you this by clicking on front. So if you click on the move copy button again, select dice over here in our bodies to select the object. And this time on this menu, we're gonna select create copy. 
So as long as this is selected, what you can do is use one of these arrows and just move it over. And that's how you make a copy of things. It's pretty simple. So to finish that, you can hit OK. But what if you wanted to delete one of these because you made too many? Well, that's also easy. You can go over to your bodies, select the one that you want to get rid of, right click and choose delete. Yes, I literally made you create a copy just to delete it. You can, you can thank me later. So another a, a fundamental principle dealing with 3D modeling and design is that whenever you create something, you either have to attach it to a plane or a face. So originally you might remember when we started this, we clicked on X, Y, and we created the sketch, which aligned the sketch to the plane. Well, we're going to create some circles here for our uh, dice block, and we're going to be using circles to do this. And in order to do this, we have to attach them to a face, which is this area here. And we have to create a new sketch to do this. So we're going to right click on this and click on create sketch. When we do this, we're going to now select uh, a center diameter circle. There's all kinds of shapes that you can use on this menu. We're just using a couple for this demonstration. So if you can select center diameter circle, these aren't going to be like super proportional, but just a quick demonstration on how to do things here. So I want to just find some kind of like intersection behind here where the lines intersect. Hold my, uh, just click the left mouse button one time and then move your mouse out. Okay. And make note of the size of this circle. So this says 0.632 for me. Okay. I'm going to press enter. And again. So this is a, this is circle now that's 0.632. Don't have to make note of it because it actually says that. Pretty cool. So then, using some of the same things that we have done before, um, we're going to extrude and make the um, insets for these, these holes that would be on a dice. So selecting the circle, what you're going to do is press E for extrude. Instead of pulling it out, though, this time we're going to just push it in. So you can kind of see if you look through the blue going this way, you're pressing into the material and you kind of make a hole. So that's like a tenth of an inch, something like that. So once you're happy with that, press enter. And you kind of make a cut into the surface, kind of like this. What's also kind of cool about this is you can still fill it these edges. So you can click on this edge here, the circle, press F to fill it, and do this to round it out. Just a little bit. And then press Enter. If you want to do the inside edge, I'm pretty sure you can do that too, right here. Press F, and there you go. Kind of makes that concave uh, look that a, the, the whole of, of a dice would have, like that. So there's that. What if you want to apply some kind of material to it, make it look like it has some kind of uh, color to it? Well, you can do that as well. So you got to click on the body, the dice, and go to, uh, I think it's create? No. Yeah, it's modify and physical appearance is how you're going to get some kind of color onto this. I'm going to do this quick because I'm almost running out of time. So over here, you have all kinds of materials that you can apply. Like, say, for example, stone, when you click on that, you just simply drag and drop these onto the material to do that. So what I'd like you to do is just kind of play around with some of these settings that we've done here today and see what you can get accomplished. Before you go, though, what we have to do is talk about how to save these files and what that's all about. 
So I do want you to like mess around with creating something else possibly, or make copies of these or use your skills that we've talked about in other ways possibly, but saving. Okay, you have storage that comes along with your your license of Fusion 360, where everything is saved online. So to save this, what you're going to have to do is click the save icon up in the top left corner, a little floppy disk, and you're going to give your project a name. Now, I am requiring you to do this. I always want you to type in your last name in the name field. Then you're going to hit the space bar and type in something that describes the project that you're working on. So in this case, wit dice. I want you to do that as well. And then the save location. I, I don't I've lost track of all the places that I save things anymore. But if you can click on this bu this button here, you can click on a new folder and type in whatever you want this to be like um project one or something like that double click it and it'll say my first project project one whatever and then you're going to save it i clicked on something else so the name got changed so again make sure it says your last name and something that describes your project which is dice okay save so it takes a few minutes for this to save because it, it's this is all done streaming through the web and you'll know that it's saved completely when the name pops up here at the top of your screen um with what you typed another thing about files that we're going to talk about is eventually you're going to create things for 3d printing um these are for lack of a better term, project files for Autodesk, Fusion 360. But if you want to export these files into other programs, you're going to have to do this another way. So we have another menu up here for file. And if you ever wanted to get these things out of your computer, you would have to do something called export. Or save as, not, or export. So I'll choose export here. So... On this screen here, you'd have your file name, and then you have the file name for Fusion 360 files. But if you hit this drop down menu here, you have all the different types of files you can download them as. One of those is going to be, um, you have to scroll down here, STL. STL files are something that we are going to use to download our files from Fusion 360 and put them into another program called a slicer program. Its name is also called slicer. So typically what I need to see when you turn in work to me for grading or for at least getting points is you're gonna to have to download this file from your computer following this method by exporting your file with your name and the project description as an STL file. And then when you're done, you would hit export. This takes a little bit of time because this has to be um, converted and uploaded and all this stuff. So I'm going to pause this video until this process is done. So just to give you an idea of how long that took, that took five minutes. So this, don't be trying to do this like two minutes at the end of class because that takes forever. So where you see this that says show in file explorer, when you click that button, it's going to give you an opportunity to see your STL file and what they actually look like. They open up in the Windows 3D viewer, which looks like this. So not a lot of materials yet so far, So, but that gives you a preview of what they look like. And then you can upload these to Google Drive to turn them into me for credit and all that good stuff too. You wanna close this. But what if you wanna open a project? You'd have to click on this panel here which is one way to do it. And you can click on all the various things. Well, I have created a lot of things and so will you. Um, you can find your folders and stuff here, open up a project and then you're ready to edit as soon as it opens it up and loads it. So 
What you should do from this point further is you're going to see if you can create some of your own things using the few skills that I've showed you in Fusion 360. And I promise I'll be back to school soon. Thank you for watching.